Can you use worm tea or compost tea? Two tablespoons molasses, two tablespoons seaweed extract, two pounds cocoa peat, three pounds manure and worm casting to a 55 barrel once a week in aquaponics. Which tea brew may be more beneficial to the system? What are the benefits? Negative effects? If so, will the benefit be significant? How will the fish react to this? Woo! The school of aquaponics. Okay, so first we're gonna answer these questions that were posed and then gonna give an explanation on why we don't teach the addition of compost teas or any of these extra um, uh, nutrient sources added to the aquaponic system. So can you use worm tea or compost tea? Absolutely, you can do that. There's a lot of people who use these uh, compost tea mixtures and add it to the aquaponic system. There's nothing wrong with using the um, uh, two tablespoons of molasses that's fine. Many people use that. Uh, seaweed extract, many people use that. The cocoa peat, many people use that. This might have some effect, if I'm not mistaken, that it might have a slight acidity to the cocoa peat. So it might have some effect to um, the pH. Um, a manure, there's people that use that as well in aquaponic systems. Now, which tea brew is going to be more beneficial to the system is all going to be relative to the nutrients that you're lacking in your system. That's what it's going to boil down to. And the makeup of each one of these um, uh, 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 compost teas, the nutrient content that's inside of it. So it's all dependent. You, what, one compost tea might work for one system, and it may have very minimal effects on another system, just depending on the nutrient content that's already available in the solution. If you have seaweed extract added to your compost tea, then there is research that shows that um, that it acts as a, a catalyst to help plants take up nutrients. It's almost like an extra boost with plants taking up nutrients and uh, making them more available um, to the plants. As far as the negative effects, um, I really don't see any negative effects of adding um, any of these um, inside of the solution. Um, the, like I said, the cocoa peat is going to reduce uh, pH. So that's one thing you're going to have to definitely uh, be aware of. Usually that's used for like seedlings or something like that. And it's probably something that I would uh, steer away from because I don't want to be putting anything in the system that's going to be contributing to the um, system's pH lowering because it's already lowering naturally. If you have a correctly set up system, which is something we're going to get ready to talk about, um, will the benefits be significant? This is probably the most important question of all of them. This is what it all boils down to. Is it even worth whipping up a compost tea, adding it into the system. And we're gonna explain why we don't teach adding compost tea inside of the aquaponic system. Well, first of all, the first thing is, when you begin getting in the habit of adding all these nutrients, um, you're really stepping in the boundary of doing hydroponics. And which is what I say uh, most people are probably doing. They're really doing hydroponics with a few fish in the system just to cover up um, to make it seem like you're really doing aquaponics, but you're really doing hydroponics by adding all these extra nutrients and extra um, uh, uh, sources of uh, uh, minerals inside of the system. That is what hydroponics is. And when you begin getting in the routine of doing this, you begin defeating the purpose of aquaponics. Aquaponics, the, one of the main functions of it is to leverage the benefit of having fish in your system. So we want to minimize the amount of nutrients that we're inputting in the system and we want to maximize the nutrient output that's coming from the fish. So let me explain. If you have a correctly sized system, which is what we teach, the foundation of aquaponics, a, co a correctly sized system with correct component ratios, then the fish feed input will supply sufficient amount of nutrients to supply plant development demands with the exception of calcium, potassium, and iron, which may never be uh, 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 supplemented um, in high enough uh, concentrations to meet the plant demands because fish require substantially lower amounts of those elements than plants. So it, th this is where the issue comes in. So we have three elements that are lacking in a properly sized system with correct feeding ratios. Now here's the kicker, this is the kicker. When you have a correctly sized system, um, as you're feeding, um, nitrification begins to take place, which is a pH lowering um, uh, um, process. So over time, you're gonna gradually see your pH begin to drop. And this is true for all aquaponic systems that are correctly sized. If you don't have anything that is buffering um, the system, like if you don't have a limestone aggregate in your system that is contributing to alkalinity, or if you don't have a, um, or, or if you have a, uh, a biological filter that maybe has crashed and is a process has denitrification taking place at large rates 
If you have your system smoothly running with no variables contributing to alkalinity, then your pH should be constantly dropping. You should see this happen over time. So we have to figure out some way to deal with the pH dropping in an aquaponic system because as it continues to drop, going down below six to the five range, 4.5 range, then carbon dioxide becomes more soluble, which then begins to affect fish respiration and the available uh, nutrient uptake of uh, ma uh, macro and micronutrients in the solution. So what we need to do is buffer up the pH as it begins to lower. We need to buffer it up. And luckily, it just so happens to work out this way that the buffering agents that are available happen to take care of two out of the three nutrients that are lacking from the fish feed concentrations. We use potassium hydroxide. That buffers up the pH, it raises it up, and it contributes the potassium to the solution, which will then be taken up by the plants. And we also use calcium hydroxide, which buffers up the pH, and it also contributes calcium to the plants. So now we've taken care of two out of the three um, nutrients that were unable to be supplied in sufficient quantities from the fish feed. So this leaves us with one nutrient that is left on the table to deal with, just one. So we have two options here. We can go and we can try to put together a compost tea and we can uh, try to formulate enough um, iron inside of this tea to supply the system, which also comes with other problems because when iron is introduced in the system, it's highly reactive. It precipitates very rapidly out of the solution and it's hard for plants to take it up. So the compost tea may have sufficient amounts of iron in there, but it does no good if it keeps precipitating out of the solution and becoming unavailable to the plant. So in that case, we use a chelated iron, which is bound by an organic molecule that prevents it from precipitating out of the solution. So this is the option number two to go and purchase one of those, which is what we teach. Go and leverage the uh, time someone else has spent formulating um, this together, which we know it's going to work. We know it's going to work for sure versus going and uh, taking the risk of doing all the work and putting a compost tea together and still having the chances of it uh, not meeting the plant requirements. So to answer the last question, will the benefits be significant? The answer in this occasion would be no. It would be no. It would not be worth the time and effort to go and formulate a whole compost tea just for the possibility of um, uh, supplying one nutrient inside of the system because we teach efficiency here. We don't teach um, people to go out and do things that aren't gonna um, benefit the operation. It's not gonna have a significant impact. If you're exerting more effort than, you're, than, than, than uh, are worth the results that you're gonna get, then it's not worth it. That's, that's, this is the model that we teach in aquaponics. There's plenty of other people that are gonna go and teach you to do all the extra compost teas and to do all the fancy stuff. And most of these ideas have their inception with the foundation being faulty, having an incorrectly sized system. When you have that, now you're gonna have to input all these extra nutrients to make up for the foundation uh, being incorrect. So you're gonna be doing hydroponics forever. And this is not a long-term solution. And it begs the question of, what is the point of having the fish inside of the system? If we're just gonna go out, whip up compost teas and add it in the system, what is the point? It's doing hydroponics, but just covering it up with fish. That's all it is. And furthermore, if we want to talk about compost teas, aquaponics is the compost tea. It's one large compost tea. That's all it is. So what we need to do is leverage that, and we need to make the most use out of it as we can. Because if not, like I said, what is the point of even having the fish in the system in the beginning? You might as well get rid of that extra headache and just formulate compost teas and add nutrients to the solution and just uh, be content with the hydroponic form of growing. And that's just all it is, as simple as that. Aquaponics has taken a drastic turn um, in a different direction than its inception, starting off of a research-based um, aquaculture type of method of growing. It's taken a significant um, uh, uh, a turn. So that we're not teaching any of the extra stuff like that. We're not teaching that. Only time that's gonna be useful is if you have an understock system or incorrectly stocked system and you need to make up for those nutrients that your fish could have easily provided um, in the system. So that is our take on the compost tea. Um, if you need any extra nutrients, 
um, the, the, the fish waste that is used from the, uh, the that is extracted from the filtration, um, you can just mineralize that. That is another form of a compost tea, but we're still using the fish um, waste. We're still using that. So we can mineralize that, have that highly oxygenated, and then you can introduce that, um, uh, those nutrients back into the solution and increase your, um, your, your nutrient content. That is one way of doing it. If you have gravel grow beds, the mineralization process or the compost tea is occurring uh, inside of those grow beds. So we don't need the addition of extra compost teas. That doesn't make sense for a correctly sized and stocked system. It doesn't make any sense. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, we do aquaponics here as opposed to hydroponics. We don't have anything against hydroponics, but we teach aquaponics here. So that is the reason why we're not adding all these extra nutrients. <laughs>